Well, I gotta take off this uh, aluminum power wire. It's a main power wire that goes to the battery. Wow. On this Jaguar. Gotta remove the fuel tank. You gotta remove the subframe to get to this because it's all. It's a rigid line. <laughs> and this is pressed together. Wow. And it just came apart, huh? Yep. Hey, I helped. <laughs> Let's take a look at what my brother's doing. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up? Here, working on a BMW 8 in there. We're just doing some VVT sometimes. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's quite involved. It's, it's got a bit of disassembly. Uh, so to, to illustrate, I'm going to put this right back. You got the intercooler in front of it. Uh, BMW thought it was a wise decision, so what they decided to do was put all this stuff in front of it. It looks daunting, really. If you look at this side, it looks like, wow, spaghetti. But um, you don't want to work on these when they're too hot because you, you got to stick your hand in there. What I had to do was take off my watch. You know, I guess I work with my watch. Uh, I get messages from the shop. You know, it's, it's, it's actually pretty uh, convenient. But anyway, I stuck my hand in there and I was able to get to the to the bottom bolt here. This is a three bolt uh, air uh, charge air cooler. Take off this clamp right here. And there is a one time use clamp right there. And you might be tempted to cut that and remove it. But I would say do a little more digging, a little more of a visual inspection and you'll see the uh, screw type clamp down here. It's a six millimeter. Yep. And you know, just remove the purge valve out of the way. And you don't need to remove the coolant lines, which is pretty nice. Some people might be tempted to, because you, when, you, when you see all that stuff, you're like, oh, well, maybe I should take all this stuff off. But no, it's not, it's not as bad as one would think. Yeah, these are notorious for having leaks, for having all kinds of coolant leaks and, and problems here. Um, <laughs> Actually, these engines are notorious for all kinds of things. You name it, it it does it. It it fails. So, you know, I like BMWs a lot, but this is not their greatest engine. <laughs> and obviously, we had Vanos codes. Vanos is the uh, VVT, the variable valve uh, timing system. When you hear about valve tronic, that's variable valve lift. People confuse them all the time. I know I got confused when I first saw them, but. Valvetronic is variable valve lift, with it, which has nothing to do with the phasing of the cam timing, uh, which is the VVT function. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Show me what you got here. I've got an injector tester from Snap-on here. It's an old school one. And it, it gives me the option to manually open and close with the, start, with the press of a button, because if I try this, it'll, it'll give me a pulse, but it's much too fast for what we need. If you could zoom in here, I want you guys to see something. So I'm gonna manually at, uh, actuate this VVT solenoid. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it, when I let it go, it slowly retracts. See that, can you see it in the camera? Yeah, you can see it. So, when I go to a good one, which is the exhaust one, I'm gonna actuate it, and it retracts immediately. When I go back to my bad one, it slowly comes back down. So that's not good for us because VVT solenoids are pulse width modulated. So if I was to, like, let's say, give this a pulse width modulated signal, this will be able to open and close. But when you're doing that to a solenoid that's either binding or mechanically uh, binding, it's just gonna stay open the whole time. It, it'll just, it's, it's too much. So that's my little experiment, is just, just using this little snap-on. Um, 
injector tester to see if it'll you know give me some results and it did you know do you need to do this not really but uh it had <clears throat> it had a connector already for it that's perfect it's typical bmw like old school injectors so i figured you know what why not let me see if i could try this and it works so and since while we're in there like look at all the disassembly you need to do right why change one so we're going to recommend both even though one of these may be good at this time uh i'm not gonna reinstall they're both going through the same amount of work you typically so i i don't feel good about just putting one new one and one old one and if something happens then we have to go back in there and do it all over again so we're recommending both ideally we would do all of them but we're just gonna go with these two on this side this time Quite, quite, not, uh, quite frankly, I, there's, no, there's no way I could just do diagonally videos. I, I tried to do that this whole time, brought in some tool review videos, but I think now it's time for you know what? Let's let's go let's go see what what we're doing in the shop. Um, so yeah, it's different. This might be episode one. I don't know what I'm gonna call it. What do you think I should call it? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Episode one, or what you working on? Episode one. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So we got the new ones actually, they just came in. And we're gonna do the same exact test. Hopefully my brother can zoom in all the way here. And it's cleaner so you should be able to see it. Uh, let me know when you're zoomed in so we get to do this. Try it out. Go ahead. See that? Super fast retraction, no binding. And I guess another takeaway is test <laughs> your new test your new parts before you install them so this is good hopefully you'll be able to see the old ones doing uh what we said it was doing so test don't guess baby is it true also that you're not supposed to activate it for a long time just yeah. a very short period right you're not supposed to do that they're not they're not designed to withstand like extended periods of, of activation so the only a quick second yeah quick because you, you'll burn it out. <laughs> you either burn it out or you can burn out the, whatever it's driving it, the transistor that's driving it. You know, obviously this is not, this is just a switch. It's more than capable of, of handling the amperage, but you know, anytime you've ever seen a computer uh, hold down, like let's say a coil or any transistor hold down or activate something for extended period, uh, periods of time, it doesn't end well for the transistor. I actually did a video on uh, that exact thing. Uh, the coil was either shorted or the transistor was stuck on at all times until it killed the coil and the driver died too. And the, the shop that gave it to us, they uh, put in a coil, but the misfire was still there. And we went ahead and found that the DME had the transistor burnt up and uh, we went ahead and replaced it. Uh, I'll try to remember to put that in the descriptions if you guys are interested in seeing that. It's the same engine, same design. And uh, yeah, we were able to open it up, change out the, the transistor and fix it for the customer. So they were pretty happy about that one. Save some money. This is the N63 engine. Big old eight cylinder. Uh, very problematic engine. <laughs> very problematic. Did I say well, it was problematic? It, fellas. <laughs> Super Mario at work. Yeah, I figured I'd pick up the camera since I never do, and uh, honestly, it feels a little natural. Yeah, you should do it more often. We need a. We, how, what do you guys think? Put my brother more on the cameraman position. <laughs> and when he's waiting for parts, he comes on over to we'll see what I'm doing. We got more stuff too, but you know that's for another. That's for another video.